Hey, what is happening, guys? Yes, we're back for part two of talking about EMF motors and generators. But before we get into it, I am blown away. The video, the last video I posted, let me uh, put this here. And then we'll zoom in so you guys can see this. You know, Big Clive's uh, cinema sign. I didn't think much of it. It was just a, you know, a cheap trinket I found in the dollar store. But guess who watched my video? The man himself, Big Clive, watched my video and commented on it. I am so excited. I mean, I don't know why, but I am just honored that the man himself took the time to comment on my video. Thank you, Clive. Thank you very much. And then everybody else who posted about guys that I forgot. Yeah, I did. I forgot a lot. I watch Buddy at the radio shop. Um, I watch Mr. Carlson. Although I believe he's Canadian too, not American. Jeez, um, who else? 12 volt vids. Also, I think he's Canadian. And I don't know how I forgot Scott the Deaf Palm. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of great ones out there. I'm just saying there aren't that many American ones. Really, there aren't. Anyway, let's get back and talk about electromotive force because it's, it's something that I find really interesting, and it is a key to understanding electronics. So electromotive force, as we talked about before in the first video, is nothing more than a difference in potential. Um, think of it like gravity. You know, we talked about the battery, the positive end, the negative end, this difference here, that's the potential. And I can demonstrate that really simply here. We'll bring out our galvan 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 galvanometer and we'll hook it up. And we'll bring in a relatively dead triple A battery. And when we hook up the contacts, I thought that one was pretty much dead. Maybe this one's more dead. No, I, I don't know. But anyway, this is one of the ways of generating electromotive force. This is the chemical way. When I connect that, a chemical reaction occurs in the battery. And what it is doing is it is creating free electron flow. It is stripping electrons off of atoms so that they can flow through the wire. So that's one way. That is the chemical way of creating an electromotive force. There is also... Uh, the magnetic way, which we looked at in the first video, which we can uh, we can talk about here real quick again. When a conductor, in this case, a little piece of wire, breaks the magnetic lines of force. I mean, I know you, there, there's barely any movement, but trust me, there really is movement there. Then we get some EMF. Now, how can we make that stronger? Well, we can coil the wire so that it breaks the lines of force in more places than one. This battery is just really crap for that. But that is the magnetic way of creating an electromotive force. And we can create an EMF thermally as well. Here is a simple thermocouple. And if we apply some heat to it, it creates an EMF. Why does it create an EMF? Well, you have two dissimilar metals here. When we heat them, they heat at a different rate 
that creates a different potential and voltage and that gives us our EMF. Simple, right? And here is probably a better demonstration of that, okay? So let's hook up our combination motor generator. Remember, any motor can be a generator when it is run in reverse. So, if I turn it and the contacts are actually touching and put it on the other setting, there's a resistor in here to give you like two different settings when you're using this particular galvanometer. Okay, bring it in here now and there you go. When I turn it one way, we get an EMF in that direction. And when I turn it the other way, we get an EMF in that direction. And it's basically the same thing. We have our magnet here. So this whole thing is magnetized in here. So this is magnetized. We have our wire, in this case, a large coil of wires going through there and breaking those electromagnetic lines of force. And when that happens, we get an electromotive force. Now, the way that this is going on here, and the reason we're getting, hello, there we go. The reason we're getting DC is because of this device here, which is called a commutator. And you can see it is split 180 degrees out of phase, or at half a circle, basically. So when this um, rotor, this is the rotor, and this is the stator, had to think there, my brain kind of froze up. When the rotor wrote, ew, come on, why won't you focus today? Focus. How about this? Will you focus on my hand? There we go. So when the rotor moves through the magnetic fields, when it is breaking the most magnetic lines of force, it's creating the largest EMF. But when it is moving, you can see we have a north pole here and a south pole here. When it goes from one to the other, we're going to get an AC current. But we're not seeing an AC current on our galvanometer. We are seeing a DC current. And that is done by the commutator. Now, if we take a close look here, at the commutator. Will it focus? Focus? I guess that's all right. So let's take a close look here at the commutator. I'm looking for a pointer. A pointer. My kingdom for a pointer. How about you? It'll work. Okay. So this wire here, coming from one half of the rotor, is attached to this point of the stator. And we can show that with our meter set for continuity. So we'll test here. There you go. So let's see if I can get this all in the picture here. If I touch the commutator here and this wire, we have continuity. But if I touch this side of the commutator, hey, 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 stop moving, stop. If I touch this side of the commutator and the wire, now why the hell did that happen? What am I doing wrong here? My bad, I was just touching it in the wrong place. So if I touch, <laughs> it's hard to get it to stay in place. Hold on. Yeah. What's happening is it's rotating so that those brushes are touching both halves. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I need it to be in this position 
and stay in that position. It doesn't want to. Well, you know what takes care of things that don't want to do what they want to do? Duct tape. Duct tape fixes just about everything except a broken heart. So now we will just So now we will simply argue with this thing until we get it <laughs> in the position that we want. Okay, now we got that duct taped in place. So now we should have whoop, continuity here, but no continuity here. I'm sorry, down here. There you see that? But over here we should have continuity. Good. And then when we come over here and we touch this wire, we get continuity here. Come on. And there. Hey Karumba. Anyway, what is happening here? is it is switching which side gets the positive. So as, now I gotta take the duct tape off. As our motor rotates, stay, play nice. Okay, so our motor is in this position here. Our rotor is in this position here. And we'll say that the blue wire is now the positive. So this side is the positive. And when it rotates over here, this side is now up. But you see, the blue wire is still the positive because this is still the positive side. This commutator part here that was over there a second ago is now over here, and it is now the negative side. So that's how that works. <laughs> Not too hard to, to comprehend. Now, this is called a split commutator. There is also one called a slip ring commutator where the brushes um, connect the same side all the time. In that case, you will get an AC current. All right. So those are three methods, uh, chemical, magnetic I mean you could say this is magnetic too but it, it's also kinetic of generating an EMF so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bring in a 12 volt slab battery and we will hook it up here and we are going to reverse what's going on yeah, let me try something different here. Hold on. Just trying to get all these wires to play nice with each other. Get everything copacetic. Okay. So now, when we reverse it and we put an electromotive force through our motor slash generator, and you say, well, nothing's happening. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because these brushes are total crap and we need to start our motor in this position. Pretty cool. That is the reverse of the EMF. Well, actually it's, instead of generating the EMF, we're using the EMF to generate kinetic energy. And that is about all I'm going to say about that for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have questions, post them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And a lot of you other guys are coming in and answering questions too. And that is awesome. That's what we want. We want the community. So thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all of my patrons. Big thanks to you right there watching this video. You're who I do it for. That's it. I'm out.
Peace.